What's up guys? Hope everyone's doing well and welcome back to the channel. So I received a ton of requests from you guys to do a part three on the side menu tutorial series on how to link a view controller to our menu options that we see here. So we're going to be going over how to do that in this video as per you guys request. I hope you're excited to get started. Let's go ahead and jump into Xcode now. All right, guys. So to make this work, we need to hop into our container controller. Uh, and we need to go to this did select menu option function. So this is the action handler for when we select a menu option. So we have uh, this switch statement where we switch through the cases of our enumeration. So if we go back and look at our enumeration, this is where we have all of those menu options. And uh, what's cool about the enumeration is it allows us to switch through all those cases and then write the code for each one of those uh, particular options. So that's really handy. That's why we use an enumeration there. So let's go ahead and see how this works really quick so we can understand what we need to do to make uh, this functionality work. So we show our menu here. And then when I hit one of these buttons, this did select menu option gets called. And you guys are gonna look in the console here and pay attention to when this print message gets uh, when it shows up in the console. So if I hit settings, there's a little bit of a delay for that to show up. And that's because we are executing this uh, function upon completion of that animation. So when the side menu uh, is done animating back to its original position, right? When we hide that menu, then this function gets called. So if we go up to this animate panel function, this is where we handle uh, animating the panel so that it either shows or hides our menu. That's why we have this should expand variable. And then we implement this menu option here, um, which is which we're going to see how that's used in a second. So if should expand, that's when we show the menu. So that's where that gets called. And we don't have any completion handler here. Uh, when we hide the menu, however, so uh, this else block gets called and we do have a completion handler here and what that completion handler means is that once that animation has completed then whatever code we write in the completion block for that uh, animation function gets executed so I noticed that when I click notifications that animation completes and then we sh we see the show notifications message and again we're seeing that show notifications message because I clicked on the notifications option. So it hits this case in our switch statement and then prints show notifications. So that's the theory of what's going on there, guys. So um, what we're gonna be doing is presenting a view controller um, in that we're gonna write the code for that, did, uh, for that in this did select menu option here. And when that animation completes, it's going to present that view controller for us, just like we saw in uh, the original completed application that I had built. So the first thing we need to do is create that view controller or the set of view controllers that we want to show. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, so let's hop to this controller folder here and we're gonna hit Command N and then select Swift file, hit next. And we're gonna call this, let's just make a settings controller really quick. So import UI kit up at the top, so class settings controller, so UI view controller. And go ahead and make all our marks just to keep good habits. Properties. Init. So you viewed it load. Super.view did load. And here we're just going to say view.backgroundcolor equals dot red so that we can see if we're getting this controller to show up. So go back to our container controller. And what a lot of you guys were doing were you were trying to use a navigation controller to push that uh, new controller that we just created. But we can't do that because our container controller is where uh, this action handler exists. This did select menu option is inside of our container controller. And uh, we are handling uh, the menu option select inside of our container controller for reasons that I explained in previous videos. We're using delegate methods and protocols, so it makes the most sense to have all of this code inside of our container controller, not our home controller. So our container controller is not and should not be embedded inside of a navigation controller. 
So we don't have access to any of the navigation controller functionality. We do, however, have that inside of our home controller because this is embedded inside of a navigation bar or sorry, a navigation controller. But the purpose of that would be if you have any options on your home controller, like if I had, you know, buttons on my home controller here or something that I wanted to take me to a new view controller, then I could push that stuff from my home controller using that navigation controller. But inside of our container controller, we don't have one of those. So what we're going to be doing is presenting a view controller. And this is what that's going to look like. So let's go to settings and we're going to say, let uh, nav controller, or sorry, say let controller equal settings controller. Then we're just going to say present. Uh, select this option, view controller to present. And we're gonna say controller, animated is true, and completion is nil, okay? So what's gonna happen is in a little bit, once we run this, this function is going to execute um, inside of this completion block in our animation function. So when this uh, guy animates back over, well, as soon as the animation is done, this uh, did select menu option guy is gonna get called, it's going to hit the settings case when we hit our settings option. It's going to instantiate the settings controller and then it's going to present that controller. And we should see that red background color um, for uh, when we present that settings controller. And then we're going to set it up so that you guys can see how we will be able to dismiss that controller as well. So I go here, hit settings, and we notice that it presents that settings controller for us but we need to be able to dismiss the settings controller. So what we're gonna be doing is embedding this settings controller inside of a navigation bar. And uh, the reason we do that is because, say we wanted to be able to push new screens onto our view controller stack from our settings controller or whatever settings controller you're presenting, which is very common. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to have that embedded inside of a navigation controller so that you can move from screen to screen inside of that settings flow, right? So let's go ahead and see what we need to do there. Hop back into this did select menu option function and we are going to create a navigation controller. So just go ahead here and delete controller there and just say UI navigation controller, open up your parentheses, select root view controller and say controller. And guys, it's better to create an instance of this settings controller. Like we could just put settings controller, uh, oops, here, right? And this would work just fine. But uh, oftentimes you're going to need to pass values from one controller to the next. And you can't do that unless you create an instance of that controller and then set properties through that instance and then uh, present the instance of that view controller that you created. So I don't, that might not make sense to you guys. If it doesn't, don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Um, that's not the purpose of this video, but like, I'll show you what that means in just a second. So let's go back to the settings controller really quickly and configure this out before we get in, we get any deeper with the theory, but behind why we do that. So let's go ahead and make this a white background color and let's create another mark helper functions, call this func configure UI, and then we're going to say uh, navigation controller dot navigation bar dot bar tint color equals dot light or sorry, let's make it dark gray. I think that's what we had in our last one. Navigation controller dot navigation bar dot prefers large titles equals true. Navigation item dot title equals settings and navigation controller dot navigation bar dot bar style equals dot black. And we can also take this guy out, put it here, and then just call this configure UI function up in our view did load method. You guys can just write all this code in the view did load method, but this is better for scalability because you know uh, it's cleaner to just have function calls in your view did load instead of a bunch of random code. Um, because obviously you guys are going to be, you know, configuring these controllers with more stuff. So this just helps you uh, scale your code in a, in a cleaner way, more professional way. So let's go ahead and run this now. 
and uh, see if this is working. So click settings and boom, that's uh, exactly what we want. And uh, I like this prefers large titles just because it, it looks cooler to me. You guys don't have to do that. You can just uh, delete this line of code if you don't want that. Now what we need to do is add a button up here to be able to dismiss the settings controller. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you downloaded the source code for this project so you have access to the assets of this project once again. Um, I added in this uh, clear white button here uh, that we're gonna be adding up here. You guys can you know, add whatever button you may like, but if you wanna use this one, just go ahead and download the source code again and so you have access to this button here. So let's go back to our settings controller now. And we're going to say navigation item dot uh, left bar button item equals UI bar button item, open parentheses. And we're gonna select this option here, image style target action. And uh, go ahead and start typing out image literal. Uh, this is how you uh, add image literals in Swift 4 now. It's, uh, they kind of ruined it with the update, but this is what you have to do. So hit enter on that completion. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Then you double click on that icon and then just select the, uh, the one you want. We're going to go uh, to the right of this button and say dot with rendering mode dot always original. So sometimes when you add buttons, the, uh, the tint color might not be the original color of the button. So this dot with rendering mode always original, make sure that we get back the original button format with the colors and all that. So style is going to be dot plane, target is self, and selector is going to be selector uh, handle dismiss. So now we need to go ahead and create that function. Selectors at objective C funk handle dismiss. And super simple, all we do is say dismiss, true, no. So now that we've done that, uh, uh, let's go ahead and run our code. And this should be it, guys. Um, after we see that this is working, I'll just go through a brief explanation of everything one more time to make sure you guys understand this stuff. And then uh, I hope you're happy with the code. So we see this button showing up up here nicely. We hit that and it dismisses our settings controller. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and uh, disable selection for these cells really quickly. So like it looks kind of ugly and I forgot to do that in the last tutorial. So go to your menu options cell and just go into your init method and say selection style equals dot none. So let's run that, see if it works. And uh, that gives you guys the framework for what you need to be able to uh, add view controllers to your menu options or link them to your menu options. So now we hit that and we see that it's not uh, giving us that ugly selection color right there. So uh, really quickly, before we uh, go back over everything, um, I wanna go back into our home control, or sorry, our container controller. So uh, I remember that we talked about uh, creating an instance of this settings controller. Um, and this is why you wanna do that. So if we go to our settings controller and say we needed to pass uh, some property into this controller. So like a very clear example would be uh, if you have a user for your app, which in this case you would, and you show the settings, you want to show the settings for that user. So it'll show like some of their profile information and some of the settings that they have in their application. You would, so then you would create a variable like user, which would be of type, you know, user. We don't have a user type in our app. So let's just say uh, username and make this a string. And on view did load, we'll go ahead and say if let username equals username and user is username. Okay, so basically what we're going to be doing is passing um, a variable to uh, our settings controller from our container controller. So uh, we are able to do this only when we create an instance of this controller. So if I go ahead now and say controller.username equals Batman and uh, run this, 
we should see that uh, print message showing up in our console. This is sort of a bonus feature for you guys. I want to teach you guys uh, how to code in a way that allows for your uh, solutions to be scalable and for your code to be as clean and professional as possible. And these little things uh, you really only get once you become a more experienced developer. Uh, this is a, a mistake a lot of beginner and intermediate developers will make. So that's why I'm trying to teach you guys this stuff and show you um, how to code things correctly and set them up to be able to scale and modify more easily in the future. So if we go here and I hit settings now, we see that username is Batman, right? And that means that we passed in this uh, we passed this username from our container controller to our settings controller. But here's the trick. So if I were to replace the view controller that we present, right, with settings controller here, and again, this is embedded inside of a navigation controller, this isn't going to work, right? Let me uh, let me hit stop really quick so we can see this working. Um, go here and say else print username not found and run that. So now if I go here and hit settings, it says username not found, right? Because it didn't, uh, we didn't pass the username value over. And uh, to go over that really quick, then we're gonna end this video because I don't want this to get too long. Um, that's because we had to create an instance of this controller to uh, get access to this username property, right? If we go here, we can we don't have access to that username guy, right? Um, so that's what this controller constant is. It's uh, it stores this settings controller in this value, and then we're able to have access to the instance of that settings controller through this value that we created, and then through access of that instance, we are then able to access that username. But here we need to make sure we present the instance that we created. If we don't do that and we just, we, we pass in this new instance. So like this constructor here means we're creating a new instance of that settings controller. So it's basically just creating a, an entirely new settings controller that doesn't contain any information about what we want to send to it. Right? So that's why we need to pass in the controller or the instance of that controller that we created because that controller now contains the information that we want or uh, has the values that we need to pass to it from this controller. So that's a pretty cool trick that I think you guys uh, should appreciate. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's really important to understand. Um, and like in building a real world application with this, you're gonna need to pass values between view controllers. So that's how you do that. A little bit of a bonus feature. Um, if you guys want to know how to actually create a settings controller, uh, let's see. Uh, give me one second, guys. Settings template uh, Xcode project. Yes. Okay. Let me run this really quickly for you guys so you can uh, see what a settings controller actually looks like. I have a video tutorial on how to do this if you guys haven't seen it already. So if you guys actually want to create a settings controller, um, this is what, you know, something like that would look like. Um, it has all these cool options. Uh, so I go over in detail how to create this stuff in another video. Uh, you guys can find that on the YouTube channel. I think it was two, uh, there, it was, it's two videos back from this one. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And also uh, make sure I, I created a, uh, a video on how to do some table view swiping actions as well. So make sure you guys check that out too. Um, tons of cool stuff on the channel, guys. Tons of stuff uh, coming out in the future. Um, I also have you know, my Instagram course and my Mastering Map Kit course. I'm currently also building um, an Uber clone. Um, so look out for that course to come in the future. Uh, links to everything is in the description, the source code that you need, uh, the links to all these courses and uh, the other videos that I mentioned. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this was for you, the fans. Thank you guys for uh, all your support. It means a lot to me. Thank you for the positive feedback and the positive comments. I hope you guys continue to support the channel. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out. I hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you next time.